You're nothing but a freeloader. You're fired. Get out of here now. For the past few years, having stepped back from the forefront of work, I was troubled by the behavior of my younger boss, Mike. He looked down on me, calling me a freeloader. What? Fired? Yeah, the board members have already been informed about this incident. Lol, just pack your stuff and leave. This can't be happening. As I was floored by the sudden announcement of my termination, Mike whispered in my ear in a voice so low that no one else could hear, you're no longer needed in this company. Lol, I'm going to pin my mistake on you, so just quit without making a fuss. Lol. Incredibly, Mike was forcing me to resign by blaming his mistake on me. This is goodbye then, lol. I left the company without the energy to resist. When I got home and told my beloved wife Sarah that I had been fired, she surprised me by smiling and nodding, saying, thank you for quitting. After finding out her reason for saying that, I felt proud of Sarah and was reminded of my initial aspirations. My name is James. I'm a 45-year-old employee. I've been married to Sarah, whom I dated in college, for 20 years now. We haven't been blessed with children, but we do live happily together. After graduating from college, Sarah landed a job at a major manufacturer, but quit to support me as a homemaker after our marriage. She was beautiful and academically excellent, apparently top of her class in the company's personnel evaluation among her peers. Honestly, I thought it was a waste for her to quit working, but Sarah seemed to have no regrets, laughing it off. I don't have anything special I want to do, so I thought I'd support your passionate pursuit of what you want to do with all my might. But having someone as talented as you can find to the home seems like a waste. Not at all. There are plenty of people who can replace me. There was never a job that only I could do. I was happy to have Sarah at home, but I kept checking with her because I was worried she might grow bored of that life. However, my worries seemed unfounded as Sarah maintained a cheerful smile. I've already decided, or what, you don't like having a homemaker wife? That's not it. I'm happy to come home to you. I'll do my best to make delicious meals. For 20 years since then, Sarah has kept our home clean and continued to make delicious meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. As for me, a recipient of my wife's devotion, I'm a game creator. I've loved games since I was a child, spending every day immersed in them, even at the expense of sleep. Gradually, I wanted to try my hand at creating games, leading me to where I am now. After graduating from college, I joined a major game production company around the time I got married. My proposed project was approved for the first time, and I was busy working with the authority to lead the project. Back then, pulling all-nighters was the norm, and I lived the life of just coming home to shower and change clothes. This is what made Sarah worry and influenced her decision to become a homemaker. Thanks to Sarah's devoted support, a turning point came for me a few years after we got married. A friend from college asked me if I wanted to start a company together. This friend had joined a rival company after college, and they often shared their situation and other information with me over drinks. The proposal to start a business came out of the blue during one of our drinking sessions. Hey James, how about we start a mobile game development company together? A game development company? Your games are selling like hotcakes, but the rights belong to the company, right? Doesn't that frustrate you? Well, I'm satisfied just being allowed to make the games I love. I've never even thought about starting a business. At that moment, I was taken aback and stumbled over my words, having never considered entrepreneurship. You're so naive. You have the talent. Don't you ever think about using it to do what you want? earn more and make Sarah happy. I don't have such talent. Then what about the huge success of the new game you were in charge of recently? Was that just a fluke? That wasn't just my effort alone. Stop being so modest. Plus, being a salaried employee comes with so many restrictions. Don't you ever wish you could create games more freely? My friend's words made me realize something. 
Indeed, fully realizing my vision for game development was difficult and frustrating as a company employee, which had its limitations. More freedom, I do want that. Are you getting interested? Is it really possible? It's not about whether it's possible or not. We'll make it possible. And so we spent the night drinking and discussing our business plan until late into the night. A year later, we both contributed $20,000 as capital and started a small company. We rented a room in a rundown apartment for our office. My friend handled sales, planning, character design, and backgrounds while I took on scenario writing and programming, covering all aspects of game development. Over the year before quitting our job, we diligently created mobile game apps. Three months after starting our business, we began distributing them. Gradually, we gained users and successfully secured sponsors, and our company grew rapidly. Now, 15 years after starting the business, our company has grown into a well-known game development company with over 500 employees and several blockbuster titles. As the company grew, many talented young employees joined, prompting me to step back from the front line of game creation about five years ago. I no longer wanted to work the grueling hours of the past, but instead focus on work-life balance at my own pace. Now, without major projects, I serve as a consultant for younger employees and start writing plots whenever inspiration strikes. I go to work early and utilize the flex time system to leave by 5 o'clock p.m. That's my life now. However, someone at work is critical of my work ethic. Mike, a young employee, who was promoted to manager in just eight years, always confronts me and looks down on me. Mike has always been ambitious, which I used to admire, but his aggressive attitude has backfired in recent years, where it's been directed at me. Today, as I was reading a document alone, Mike came up from behind and said, you always seem to be free. Make sure you're actually working too but I found some interesting material and was just looking through it. Material? Lowell, you're not even handling any significant work and you're talking big. It's clear as day you're not doing anything. You freeloader. I was at a loss for words at his direct insult. Mike continued, why don't you just retire? Lowell, you getting paid without working is irksome to everyone around here. Now hold on a minute. I do take care of some necessary tasks. Come on, spare me the excuses. Lol, it's infuriating to see someone like you. If you're not going to work, don't come to the company at all. Facing such harsh criticism every time we met, I was troubled. While I pondered how to deal with Mike, the harassment and verbal abuse escalated daily. Then one day an incident occurred. Hey James, what is it? As I arrived at work in the morning, Mike suddenly called out to me, anger in his tone. You're making our major sponsors angry. What are you doing? Huh? What about the sponsors? Don't act like you don't know. Lol. You rejected all the proposals to feature their products in the game without consulting anyone and just went ahead with the production, didn't you? No, what are you talking about? Mike's yelling echoed throughout the office. In front of many employees, I was berated, feeling like I was on pins and needles. I wasn't even in charge of any game production work involving sponsors. Looking directly at Mike, I could see the laughter in his eyes. I've overlooked you not doing your job, but I can't stay silent if you start causing losses for the company. You're fired. Fired. Yeah, the board has already been informed about this incident. Lol. Just pack your stuff and leave. This can't be happening. In a voice so low no one else could hear, Mike whispered in my ear, Our company doesn't need you anymore. Lol. At least with this, I'll let you take the blame for me, a valuable employee. Incredibly, Mike was forcing me to resign by pinning his mistake on me, and he had meticulously involved the board members, too. This is goodbye, then. Lol. Saying that, Mike sneered at me and spat out his words. After being berated by Mike, I silently packed my things and left the company without the energy to fight back. 
I was beyond angry and actually oddly calm. Mike had threatened me with termination, but I knew it wasn't so simple to just fire someone. However, I couldn't bear the thought of working with Mike any longer, and I decided it was best to leave the company. After leading a busy life as a company employee, and then becoming even busier after starting my own business, I lived selfishly, doing what I loved. The result was being fired by a junior manager, which I feared might anger or bore my wife when I told her about it. It was just past noon on a weekday when I returned to my apartment, thinking that I had never come home at a time like this. My wife greeted me with surprise. I'm home. Welcome back. What happened today? You're early. Yeah, actually, I told my wife all about the termination incident. Really, it's embarrassing that this happened, but I'm quitting the company. My wife, listening silently until the end, nodded with a full smile, different from the angry face I had imagined. Yes, I think it's good. Thank you for quitting. What do you mean? Come with me. There's somewhere I want to take you together. Where to? My wife didn't answer my question but stood up with a smile and hurried me along. She said we were going to have a delicious lunch and led me to a busy downtown area close to our home. As we walked down the busy main street lined with office buildings and fashion malls, people approached my wife, occasionally shaking hands. Are you Sarah? I'm a fan of yours. I'm so thrilled to meet you. Thank you. I came to this restaurant today because I saw it on your blog. Really, that makes me happy. I was utterly bewildered, staring dumbfounded at my wife who had become a celebrity. After the crowd dispersed, Sarah turned back to me, surprised. Yeah, a bit. What's going on, Sarah? Are you a celebrity? When you were busy with work, chasing your dreams with such dedication, it made me want to do something too. Is that so? Yeah, so I started a blog. A blog? I couldn't hide my surprise at my wife's unexpected revelation. Yes, I began sharing information about beauty, delicious restaurants, fashion, and other things I like. It got a great response, and now I'm somewhat of an influencer. Saying that, Sarah revealed the truth with a slight blush. Indeed, Sarah had always been beautiful and popular in college, but I had no idea she had become so famous through her blog that people would recognize her on the street. She told me more about it, mentioning that the blog has a large readership, which generates a significant amount in advertising revenue. Do you despise me for keeping this a secret and doing it on my own? Of course not. I'm really proud of you for garnering so much attention and thriving. Thank you. It's all thanks to you, James. Thank you for giving me the chance to change. Now that you've quit your job, I was hoping you'd support me in return. Hearing my wife say that everything was thanks to me, I was reminded of how I felt when we first started my company 20 years ago. I was completely absorbed in game development. 15 years ago, I made a significant decision to pursue my dream of creating the games I wanted, starting a business with a friend. That passion led to a sense of accomplishment as the company grew and we created all the games we wanted. However, Sarah's words made me realize that my desire wasn't just about being a game creator, but about wanting to grow the company as one of its founders. Now, with many talented young employees having joined, I felt the work had become routine and less innovative, making it less interesting. This growing concern about the company's direction prompted me to reach out to my friend. He too felt the mobile game development industry was saturated with rivals and that we needed to create more innovative content to ensure the company's future. As a result, we decided to hold a shareholders meeting. On the day of the meeting, I wore a suit for the first time in a while and visited the conference room of the company I had left. Among the familiar faces was Mike, and I felt disheartened to see him. Apparently, he had been buying shares and was attending the meeting. I tried to pass through the entrance without being noticed, but Mike quickly spotted me and approached with a sneering smile. Hey, James, feeling lonely after getting fired? Lol. Mike, you seem as energetic as ever. 
My attempt to joke back only made Mike turn serious and start berating me. What does a fired employee like you want here? You better leave, lol. It's embarrassing and pathetic to hang around with lingering attachment, lol. No need to worry about me. Shut up and just get out. Don't make me say it again. Get out of here. I casually dealt with Mike's persistent harassment and waited for the shareholders' meeting to begin. Soon the meeting started with my friend, the president, taking the stage as the chairperson and declaring the meeting open. The meeting proceeded, and it was time for Q&A with the shareholders. When I raised my hand, Mike, who had followed me to the next seat and had been pestering me, tried to stop me in surprise. Come on, lol. Raising your hand is so embarrassing. Stop it, lol. A minor shareholder like you should stay quiet. Lol. You're disrupting the proceedings. Ignoring Mike's heckling, I looked towards the host and my name was called. Mr. James, thank you for joining us today. Please go ahead with your question. My question is this. It seems there are no new business ventures and I'm concerned that without them, the increased personnel costs and other expenses will lead to decreased profits. What measures are in place to address this? Director, your response please, the board member said, seeing my face and starting to sweat and tremble. Mr. James, as you rightly pointed out, there are numerous challenges with our future business plans. Please be concise. Are there any measures in place, and do we have the necessary personnel adjustments for that? We are all considering that. It will be too late to just consider it. Listen, I made every suggestion I could think of for the company's growth, and the management team listened intently, their faces stiff with seriousness. All the while, Mike stared blankly, not understanding what was happening. Therefore, we need new projects and the creation of a sales department for that. We also need flexible staff reallocation according to each employee's strengths. Understood. Unable to hold back any longer, Mike loudly interrupted the proceedings. Wait a minute, lol. Why is the director even listening to this guy? Lol. Stop it, please. At Mike's words, the faces of the management team on stage froze in an instant. You idiot. Who are you? How dare you speak to Mr. James like that? I'm Mike. I work for this company and I'm also a shareholder. Lol. More importantly, we should be kicking out this guy right away. It's embarrassing for the company. Lol. Mike, did you say? Do you not know who Mr. James is? Of course. Lol. He's the underperforming employee I fired. Lol. Don't joke around. This man is the founder of our company and holds over 50% of the shares. One word from Mr. James and your job is gone in an instant. At the director's words, Mike's face went pale, and he began to tremble. Ted, that's a joke, right? This can't be serious. He was just a useless employee shoved off to the side. Then my friend, the president, who had been silently watching, spoke up angrily but calmly. It's all true. James is my friend. We both contributed equally to the capital when we founded the company, and you dare to call him such names. Faced with the president's glare, Mike started desperately trying to excuse himself, shrinking away. I, I didn't know. I mean, he always seemed to be doing the easy jobs and leaving on time. I had no idea he was a founder. I'm so, so sorry. The company exists today because of the initial game production work done solely by James, and you fired him. Ridiculous. Please, I'm begging for forgiveness. You're fired. Leave the conference room and the company immediately. This is too much. This is so unfair. And so, Mike, due to his disrespectful behavior exposed in front of the president, was immediately fired and broke down crying. Afterward, Mike was practically dragged out of the company by security guards. Despite being young and promoted early due to his ambition and dedication to his work, Mike was the type of person who would step on others to get ahead, thinking only of himself, causing friction everywhere within the company. 
This behavior led to smooth operations being hindered and numerous issues with business partners, prompting the company to consider actions until his appalling attitude towards me was exposed, resulting in a direct termination from the president. After Mike was gone, employees who had been intimidated by his arrogant attitude could work more freely and happily, improving the workplace environment. As for me, after being apologized to by the president and board members, I was asked to return to the company. They were unaware of Mike's attempt to fire me, thinking instead that I had left the company of my own accord. I apologized for leaving without explanation due to my feelings at the time. I also expressed my wish to work in human resources upon my return, not gain development. Since starting the business, I've felt strongly that a company is made up of people, and by selecting the right personnel and placing them in the right positions, the company can grow even more. My current goal is to help the company continue to provide new value to many people and grow. That's why I find my role in recruitment so fulfilling. Since taking charge of HR, I've focused on selecting employees whose desires align with the company's vision, significantly reducing workplace conflicts. Although I sometimes get asked to help with game development, I turn down all such requests. I believe that dedicating myself fully to what I truly want to do yields better results than before. No matter how much the company grows, I plan to continue focusing on recruitment in my work, valuing people above all else.